You see, I was sending you a coded message, and we were using a code called semaphore. And semaphore was used by the Navy to send messages between ships using flags. Now I sent you a message, but it means absolutely nothing without the key. So let's have a look at the message again with the key and see what it says. So this symbol is an H and an I and an M an A, a K, an E, an R, and an S. Hi, makers! Now, as you may have noticed, today's video is all about codes, how to make them and how to break them. Which reminds me! Hey makers, I'm at the Exchange, a cultural arts venue in North Shields. They're a registered charity for arts and music. And inside of here, there is something that I think is particularly amazing. Come on. Now this is a stained glass window designed by the artist Marilyn O'Keefe. And it celebrates the life of a North Shields man who goes by the name of Thomas Brown. During World War II, the British Army couldn't decode the German cipher. It was called the Enigma Code. And until they could do that, they were in real trouble. There was lots of bad things happening, people were dying, and the British Army needed to break this Enigma Code. And Thomas Brown helped with that. Now, Thomas wasn't a spy or special intelligence. He was a 15-year-old Naffy Canteen assistant. He worked in the kitchens on the ship. And when his ship was in Egypt, the rest of the crew noticed that a German U-boat was in trouble. And the crew of the U-boat were abandoning the ship. And Thomas went across with some other Navy crew members, and he was involved in transporting the Enigma cipher back to his ship. He helped to steal the Enigma cipher that helped crack the code. For his efforts, Tommy Brown was awarded the King George Medal, and he was the youngest person to be awarded that, okay? But he was actually sent back to North Shield soon after because he was too young to be enrolled in the NAFI. So it was actually a young person from our region that helped to crack the Enigma code that saved millions of people's lives during World War II. I think that is particularly amazing. Which reminds me, let's get back to the shed. <laughs> oh, all right, we've looked at semaphore and we've looked at the Enigma code, but today what I really want us to focus on is Morse code. Now, in Morse code, we represent letters using dots, dashes, and spaces. And these dots, dashes, and spaces can be shown in the real world using a variety of things, but the most common is either light or sound. It's time for a mixed off breakdown. So makers, sound and light can both be created using pulses of electricity. And to demonstrate this, I've got out our trusty breadboard again. And we can see that we've got a circuit that's being created. We've got our batteries flowing into our Morse code switch going through some electrical wire, which transfers electricity, and into a buzzer at the other end. Now, Morse code was initially used to transfer messages over long distances before the invention of the telephone. The electrons could pass down the wire and make a sound at the other end. And that's what we're going to demonstrate right now. Okay, makers, I'm now going to send a message using Morse code. We're going to use the telegraph switch, and when the plates touch together, it will send electrons down the wire to the buzzer. Now, ours is really close, but this could happen over many miles. Are you ready? Right now, that message might not mean anything, because you don't know the key. And if you don't have the key, you don't have the secret. So I'm going to show you the key. You ready to see the key? That's the key. 
Now you can clearly see that dot 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 is S, dash 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 is O, and dot 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 is an S again. So the message I just sent you was SOS, standing for Save Our Souls, the international message for distress. But it's okay, I'm not in distress. Now, for the message I just transmitted, I used the buzzer, but I could just as easily use the light. Check it out. Beep, beep, beep. No beeps, it's light. And if I can send Morse code using light, I can create a Morse code using our Raspberry Pi. Woohoo! Okay, makers. In our previous videos, we showed you how to create a circuit with an LED attached and how to use Scratch to control that. All we're looking for from now is to create a sequence of instructions that sends a coded message using Morse code. So you're gonna have to think about a message, encrypt it into Morse code, code it into Scratch, and then run it. And if your friends know how to use the key, they can decrypt your messages and you can send secret messages around. Now, before we do that, we need another Make Stuff Breakdown! <laughs> Number one, the length of a dot is going to be 0 0.2 seconds. Number two, a dash is 0 0.6 seconds. Number three, the spaces between the same letter is 0 0.2 seconds. Number four, the space between letters is 0 0.6 seconds. The space between words is 1.4 seconds. Right now, this LED is just flashing. It's not transmitting a message. And what we want is to create a sequence of instructions to make it display a message. The first message that we're going to walk through is a four letter word and that's make. And if we look on our key, the first letter of make is M, which is dash dash. Okay makers, here's the code that we used to make the LED flash continuously. Now we're going to use this, but we're going to change it into an M. And remember, using our key, M is dash dash. Now, to, for a dash, we're going to use 0 0.6 seconds for on. And for off, it needs to be 0 0.2. But if I use this code, it's just going to do dash forever. It's not going to be dash dash. So rather than using a forever loop, what we want to use is a repeat loop. And I'm going to just take it out and I'm going to make it, rather than repeating 10 times, I'm only going to ask it to repeat twice. And when I do this, it's now going to do dash, off, dash, off. And it's going to do it twice. So this here is the code for an M. So an M is dash, dash. The second letter in make is A, which is dot, Dash, let's code an A. Before we even get onto the A, we have to tell the user at the other end that we finished the M. So what we have to do is make sure we have a space between letters which is three units long, which is 0 0.6 seconds because one unit is 0 0.2. So we're gonna put a wait after our repeat and we're gonna make that of 0 0.6 seconds just to signify that we finished the M. And then for the A, we're going to just put a repeat of one in because it's a single thing because an A is dot dash. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy out this code. All right. At the minute, this is a dash. But if I change it to 0 0.2, it's a dot. And to finish off the A, I need a dash. So I'm going to duplicate my dot code and I'm going to change the wait time of it being on to 0 0.6. You will notice, guys, I'm only changing the weights underneath the GPIO2 on because we're not changing the time that it's off during the letters, we're changing the time that the LED is on during the letters. And now I've got an M, a weight, and an A. And what I can actually do is I can put another weight at the end so that I can do my next letter which is 
a K, which is dash, dot, dash. At this point, guys, it becomes really easy because I've already got the code for dots and dashes in there. We're just going to copy it out and use it to make our letters. All right. So down here, I'm now doing a K and I wanted to repeat once. And a K is dash dot dash. This code here is a dash. So I've got a dash in there. And then this code here, the top four lines is a dot. There's a dot. And then underneath that is a dash. So all I'm going to do is put them in there. And now I've got a K. And I'm going to duplicate out a weight 0.6 seconds and plonk it at the end, ready for my final letter. The final letter is an E, and an E is dead easy because it's just a dot. And the reason why an E is just a dot is because an E is the most commonly used letter in the English language. And so, to make it easier for the people who were encrypting the messages, they made an E just a dot. An E is easy. Let's code it. So finally, we're just going to put a little dot at the end. All right, so we're going to do a repeat one time, and then we're going to take the code for a dot from up here. I'm going to get rid of the dash, and I'm going to put the dot at the end. Now, this is coming quite long, all right? So I can actually scroll down and see the whole of it. This is an M, an A, a K, and at the end, we've got an E. Now, we've finished the word. So what we have to do is put a space to tell the person at the other end that we've finished our word. And that is made up of seven units. So seven times 0 0.2 is actually 1.4, OK? And that signifies to the person at the other end that we've finished our word. Now, if I wanted it to repeat over and over and over again, just saying make, 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 what I would do is I would wrap everything in a forever loop, OK? And now our LED will just say make, make, make. So, makers, when we play this code, we can see dash, dash, M, dot, dash, A, dash, dot, dash, K, dot e and again m a k e make 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 so makers that's how we code an led to say make in morse code but we don't want yours to say make we want it to say whatever the heck you want so your task is to take a word convert it into Morse code, and then turn the Morse code into code in Scratch to send your message to your friend. And then your friend can use the key to decode your message. And you can do it all in secret. Thank you very much for joining me in the Shed Makers. In this video, we've focused on code. We've looked at semaphore, Enigma code, but specifically focused on Morse code. We've looked at the history of Morse code and how it was used to send telegraphs during the Industrial Revolution. We've also looked at international Morse code rules, and you guys have created your own Morse code messages using Scratch. That is a heck of a lot. I hope you've had fun. Until the next time you head to the shed, get out there and make stuff. Yeah.